So once somebody becomes a victim of human trafficking, there are many ways the trafficker may control the person. This includes holding on to their legal documents, controlling the destination and route. For example, if somebody is going from Indonesia to Malaysia, the victim may not understand that where they are or exactly how they got there. Debt bondage can occur, which is, includes the cost of transportation, obtaining new documents, getting new housing. These debts can be extremely hard to pay back. They're unfamiliar with the local laws. There may be endemic corruption. For example, perhaps the police or even political officials have been paid off so that getting help can be very difficult. They may have trauma bonding. They may be very ashamed of their situation and have a lot of guilt. Or perhaps they're fearful that per their family will not accept them if they come back or fearful that they'll be arrested. And they may have things such as addiction that may make it difficult to get away as well. Where does it happen? The top labor industries in Indonesia are the fishing industry, construction, on plantations, mining and manufacturing, and then domestic work. In terms of sex trafficking in Indonesia, it can happen in many places. It can happen abroad, such as in Malaysia, Taiwan, and the Middle East. It can happen here in Indonesia around mining villages, or child sex trafficking often happens in the islands around Singapore and in Bali. So who is affected? Let's take a look at some of the numbers. When we took, take a look at global trafficking, when we look at adults and children, adults are usually affected more often, but there are quite variances among different countries. Approximately 75% are adults versus 25% are children. In terms of gender, women tend to be affected more than men. Approximately 51% of victims of human trafficking globally are women, followed by men, 21%, girls 20% and boys 8%. Global trends are also changing as we look over time. As we become more familiar and learn to identify victims of human trafficking, we see that men are becoming identified more often. So this distribution between men and women are beginning to change. In Indonesia, migrant work is largely responsible for a lot of victims of human trafficking. There are 4.5 million Indonesians working abroad, and nearly 2 million of them are undocumented or have stayed past their visas. The data from the International Organization of Migration showed that between 2005 to 2014, approximately 7,000 Indonesian survivors of trafficking were assisted by IOM. 82% of these victims were women, and 82% were trafficked out of Indonesia. It's important to note that 85% of the victims were also recruited from recruitment agencies. When we look at Indonesia more specifically, we see that women are the makeup of about 55% versus men, 30% versus girls, 14%. Lastly, looking at trafficking in person report that comes out every year, we see that the protection in 2017 we identified approximately 58,000 or 5,800 victims, and also out of those, 293 were suspected to be children that were victims of human trafficking. A local NGO estimated that nearly 80,000 children were exploited for sex in 2007. How do we address human trafficking? We look at it through the three Ps. This includes prosecution, protection, prevention, and then sometimes people include a fourth P called partnership. If we use this framework, we can begin to address the issues surrounding human trafficking. Thank you very much.